The following podcast was recorded on July 30th, 2023. So, we back. What's up, bro? feel like we never left. I mean, it looks different, but I feel like, seems like it was just yesterday I just saw you. Yeah. So, I, my, our last conversation, we was talking about student debt, particularly your student debt. Mm-hmm. The goal of paying it all off. Mm-hmm. So, I believe you said when we'll meet again, it'll be paid off. I see glasses i see bottles so i mean you got you got the bottle you got the bottle like you say you would so i appreciate you for that i try to be a man of my word sometimes okay all right (laughs) so we celebrating i think being right Mm -hmm. of course we are what are we toasting to uh toasting to paying off my student loans today (laughs) Today. (laughs) well not today but like having paid it off in general in general yes no debt no debt debt free who'd you owe fannie mae or let me take a sip before we dive in. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a long conversation for that. So before we get into all of that, how does it feel to be debt-free, student loan debt-free? Um, it kind of feels the same. I kind of feel the same. It's just I feel slightly at peace more, even though it's like just because I paid off my student loans doesn't mean I like won the game of life and I don't have to pay rent for the rest of my life. I mean, I still got to pay rent. And other stuff, but just knowing that I don't have to pay student loans, it's, uh, it's a really good feeling. I mean, to go through that journey of, first off, going to seek advanced education. A mm-hmm. lot of people don't do that. A lot of people see the price, so they just do the last, it's not for them. So to go through with that, get the degree, get the diploma, all that. But also now you have the debt, you get the debt. And so that's another task yeah. of its own, right? And a lot of people sometimes tend to say, all right, I'm going to just hold off on paying it off right away mm-hmm. and let it sit. Maybe the government will forgive it. Maybe something may happen. You never know. Man. <laughs> you went and you just said, screw that. I'm just going to go ahead forth with it. What made you just want to just go just with that mentality of I got to get this done by any and any by any and all means, it seemed like? Um, I think we talked about this last time, uh, exactly a year ago from today. Um, I think I said that I have like bigger goals that I want to do career-wise outside of you know, paying student loans. And I knew that that's going to be one of the roadblocks, like making sure I have no debts, make sure I have, you know, nothing that's blocking the road to where I'm trying to go. So I was like, the student loans are the only thing in my way right now. So I might as well just knock them out. So, but yeah, before we get started, I actually want to touch point, uh, especially to you guys that, um, I kind of misconstrued some of the numbers. Um, what I recently did was I went back, I think early in January, I went and I looked at all my um, my tax documents from like going on from the year after I graduated college leading up to, to now. And apparently I said some type of off the wall number, but it was definitely it was definitely not accurate. And I apologize for that. I did the math. I'm probably going to edit like a screen that says like all the numbers and stuff. But and, uh, and there's no- the real numbers was um, total student loans, $56,418 in student loans. That's how much I had when I paid, um, when I graduated in May 2017. I owed $35,040 to Fed Loan slash Ed Financial, which is what they now are, even though um, apparently they're transferring to another student loan servicer. So... Luckily, I don't have to deal with that no more. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I owed Sally Mae $16,878. And I owed Heartland Etsy, Etsy uh, $4,500. And that equaled $56,418. And the outcome is I fully paid off my student loans on March 10th of 2023. I gave you guys a text message that day that was like, hey, guys, it's done. Let's do it. <laughs> it's done. Um, I calculated all the interest I paid, including I um, I added how much I'd owe in interest leading up to next year's tax document that show like how much I paid off. And over the eight ish years that I had student loans, I've uh, paid off eleven thousand four hundred fifty dollars and ninety nine cent in student loans and in uh, student loan interest alone. Eleven thousand. Yeah. Uh, then included with the fifty six. That's fifty six nah, total to tally. That's plus. That's before. Yeah, adding the interest. With the interest total, I paid off sixty thousand. 
Moscato is getting to me already. I paid off $67,868.99 oh total in combined student loans and student loan interest. And I've had that student loan, majority of it from, I've been paying it off since I got it in 2015 when I was 20 to March 2023, where I'm 28 now. So, an eight, eight-year journey of starting to pay that, god damn, that much money. <laughs> I don't know if I can curse with you. Seriously. God yeah, damn. when I was a sophomore, I, um, I got the campus job. I was like, I want to get a head start now. Like, I know I can't, like, be putting in, like, money like that, but with each paycheck, each little paycheck that yeah. I was making, their, uh, their minimum wage at the time was, like, Eight twenty-five. I would at least put in twenty-five dollars every paycheck. Along with you know, that's when you like you you in college, so you're making like a little college money, like a little two three hundred dollars. I yeah, I put in at least twenty-five. That way, when I graduate, I'll have the the discipline to know that like I need to take out this portion for this, which like it's kind of a adulting coming of age thing where like you learn how to pay bills, like you learn how to budget stuff in. So I got started. Very early on. I was going to say, that's something we're still, as adults, still trying to figure out the whole idea and thing of budgeting. Man. <laughs> you started while in college. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were supposed to be living your best life and not caring about the debt. I mean, I was living my best life, but like, still like, it's creeping in the back of your mind. It's like, you know, you're going to have to pay it off at some point. So and that's why. I... That, it goes back to what I said earlier. Like, a lot of people in college, I, I believe they just tend to wait till after graduation and be like, oh, oh, I got to pay off this debt. Mm -hmm. Then it may not. You get that wait for the career to take exactly. off and then hopefully exactly. that pay like exactly and it's like yeah you can do that but you still like you're making amazing money mm -hmm. and it's not it's not guaranteed exactly especially off of one income <laughs> like knowing that like i went to school for an acting degree which is like considered like a underwater basket weaving degree because like you can learn you can honestly learn that like at a community college or take a few classes but like i wanted the full college experience that come with that and like a lot of people do that or they like consider that to be like a worthless degree because like you can't really apply that to life. Like mm -hmm. it's true to to a certain degree. Uh -huh. But um, <laughs> it's about how you take that knowledge from that situation that you got to experience yeah. over a four year, hopefully four year period and how you apply that to the real life. Like because of college, I was able to meet a friend that invited me to his Indian wedding in India. Like, how many black people do you know went to India before? It was like, I mean, if you went, period. Right? Like, I only met two other black people when I went to India, and one of them was already on our trip. Oh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know who, how many black people you'll see in India. So, yeah, that, that's amazing. It's all right. Yeah, but, like, just being able to, like, have of access. That relationship. That relationship, just because I went to school to study this, and, like, I learned that his friends are also into film and acting. So, that gives me international market mm -hmm. to work with because like if i'm out there they'd be like hey let's shoot something they're like something that if i had say in chicago i wouldn't have had, i wouldn't have had that opportunity like you know i might have met some people but like i wouldn't have had that you know it's, it's not guaranteed like yeah. nothing's guaranteed it's like what you make of the moment and how you take advantage of that so i feel like i got my money's worth <laughs> you damn sure did you paid it off or you definitely did <laughs> But I guess looking back, would you go back, would you change anything about the experience, the journey of just, um, would you pay more sooner? Or you just feel like everything happened for a reason the way it did and no looking back at this point? I have no regrets because I feel like it's all part of life, especially as like not a first generation student, but like a first generation in my family to graduate from school. It's all learning experience that I hope this project and uh, will inspire others to like just know take your own road like it's not like we predicted a pandemic a global pandemic happening that would alter just history of everything just life in general yeah because like if it wasn't for the pandemic i wouldn't have had that wake-up call to okay i need to take advantage of this moment and pay off these loans now. So I feel like if it wasn't for the pandemic, as sad as, as bad as that is to say somewhat, because the pandemic did, did kill like a lot of people and like caused a lot of controversy and other stuff. Um, I feel like I was able to get the best wake up call of my life out of that. And now from what you can see where I'm now reaping the fruits of that labor. 
that I was I've gotten from that wake up call. So 2020 definitely gave me 2020 vision and like opened my eyes up to what could be my future if I decide to just put my priorities together in life and knock this out the way. And it's done. So here we are now, just sipping on Moscato in somewhere out west in Chicago. You should say it out west this time. You say out, out west. west, yes. Just it's it's amazing just to know how much you pay off and from where you started to particularly 2020 where you, the epiphany happened because of the pandemic, where it's like, okay, it's do I guess was it more like now or never, or just like let me just get this out of the way? Or would you say as we have the Kobe Bryant head, was just the mama mentality, I gotta get this done at all any and all costs, just get it done, no excuses, make it happen. It's a combination of everything you said. Back in 2020, a lot was going on. And a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of overall just stillness, stuff that like things happen that just make you more in the moment of like what's going on. Cause you have more time to like be by yourself and like take in everything. And I realized that like with everything that's going on, I need to put myself in a position to where I can get ahead when this thing blows over when it eventually did. Like we, you know, when it first happened, we didn't know it was going to be like, they said it was going to last two weeks, then it went to a month, then it just turned into, it just, it just went to, it just went all bad. But like knowing that, hey, I have free time. I have a moment of my time to like look up and like see everything. It made me realize that like, this is not where I want to be right now. Like the government's giving us stim stimulus checks and everything. Like this is great, but like I feel like I can be utilizing my time more wisely and getting the most bang for my buck. So I went with like the kind of the the mama mentality where it's like I have a passion for this. This is my end goal to be the best version of myself continuously every single day. But in order to along with getting to that, I have to knock out this this, the, you know, this, this obstacle that's in my way. So if I apply that and like, if I put, if I put it in pressure, like every single day with like my job and like, especially going with my career, like I can get to that point to where once that obstacle is out my way, I can give full effort into anything that I want creatively. Mm -hmm. And just like in life in general. Yeah. Just, just using the mentality. I, I know, Everybody knows Kobe for being the great basketball player, but just the mentality in general, just again, just getting it done at any and all costs, just looking at a goal, looking at an obstacle that's in your way and just saying, nothing's going to stop me. I just got to go forward and do it. And 2020, it was just, it feels like that was just the beginning of a lot of some moving circles around just being an economic, just with dead people who want rider strike, active strike, just everybody fighting for a certain level of equality, what they feel is value, whether it's mm, yeah. countries fighting for value, individuals fighting for value, for do you want to be a Social creative? Social justice at yeah, the time, like you, every, yeah. Everything's been going since 2020, it started through a pandemic, during being in silence. It's like exposed. In yeah, it exposed a lot of the negative side and the reality of what it really is for living. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being watered down, just not maybe being in a surface. Filtered yeah. or just being swept under the rug. Yeah, we got a chance to really sit down and honestly see what was going on with the George Floyd and just the social justice like you said with that and then also now with just fighting for economic justice and just you know right of living wage, wage yeah all those things and again even with the Supreme Court shut down the uh, Student Law Forgiveness Act oh man so yeah you, obviously you don't have to worry about but still unfortunately there's some people out there in tune with this they probably are hoping they can get that done but yeah just like not relying on the government to take care of anything Cause uh, let me tell you, so September, October of last year, remember when they were like, uh, Biden uh, unveiled his like his plan. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. And like every he had like the email sign up and everything. Yeah. So like, mind you, I had still like, to this day, I um not to this day because like I haven't been on there as much, but like, I student loan was my number one Google search. I Google student loans to keep updated. <laughs> every single day just to make sure you know i was in the loop about what's going on yeah so when that happened ooh, let me sign up for that Ooh, i'm qualified too okay wait all right but but i'm still paying off these loans though at that point when i had called you Jan yeah i called you january 1st before we did the first interview um i called you january 1st yes. of 2022, 2022 
tell you that I had just paid off Sally Mae and only had about sixteen or eighteen thousand dollars left. General. Mm-hmm. So when he set that to like the qualify for up to 10, 10 grand, I was like, this is probably not gonna happen. It's probably a lot of cap, but let me get to the ten thousand dollar mark and then let me see like what he gonna do. So by that point, yeah, I went to India of last year in December. So also I already had my ticket booked and everything. So I was just like, let me make at least get to the ten thousand dollar mark. That way I can feel like comfortable in case it actually goes through. So I hit that goal, but like November, the early November. And like, that's when I actually like took a look in the mirror and I was like, dang, like I got $10,000 in student loans left. Like I had started like $54,000. That's, you know, that's not including the interest yet. Right, like, right. And like now I'm down to $10,000 and I was like, I was feeling myself. I was like, I had lost like some weight, even though I didn't know I had any weight to gain because like I've always been skinny, but like just like looking good in the mirror, I like had time to clean my house. I was like, it's a good moment. But um, that moment didn't last because uh, right around that time, around like November, the end of November, that's when he like delayed student loans again. Yeah. All the way to this summer. And he's like before the Supreme Court decision. And then I was like, aha, I knew it. So I was like, let me take a break from paying off student loans. Not so much, but like, let me just take a little breather. At that point, you know, I was still working 70, at least 70 hours minimum a week. No, let, me, <laughs> let me go down to like 60, 65 for like a month or so. That's like a break to me. To like, just to like take a breather. You know, I've been going in so much and then let's see like where it goes from there. And before I went to India, I had made up my mind that this counts as my break. But when I get home, I'm put my head down. I'm gonna knock out the ten grand because he's not going. That Supreme Court is not gonna. It's not gonna do that. So that when that happens, I'm ready for it. So basically, you went in the mindset knowing that it wasn't gonna happen. That the Supreme Court wasn't gonna allow this, the forgiveness. The little just say, I'm just gonna knock it out. Basically, I knew they was just gonna kick the can down the road, as they always do. And then when uh. When did they release the decision? Around like June? Obviously a month ago. A month ago? Yeah, like June of, uh, right now it's 2023. I know you guys are looking at this in the future, but yeah, it's 2023. We're not lying. This happened a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, when they released the decision, um, I wasn't surprised because I already had paid off my student loans by March. So I was just like, my family is looking at me crazy because remember, I didn't get the time. I, I barely got time to spend with them anyway. Right. So they're like, you know, Biden's going to like forget them loans, right? I was like, uh-huh, yep. Sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about nothing no more. I've like, I, I Google student loans today after like not doing it for like three weeks now. Because like every time I look at it now, it's just like, yeah, Biden's new uh, updated plan, the CARES Act yeah. or whatever. Like you said, just kick it the can down the mm-hmm. <laughs> For the next president to worry about. Next president. Yeah, essentially, yeah. And then the next president got to deal with all the baggage of all the other presidents. And I was just like, no. Yeah. Let me just take the power into my own hands and like make the outcome of the future that I want, not what the government has planned for me. Because you see, they ain't got none good planned for anybody right now. Now you got everybody freaking out because pretty soon them student loans are going to be start revving back up. I think in September, I want to say. September, yeah. Some of these student loan services, they've like completely... Like we talked about, they completely switched servicers. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, you don't know where your money is going at. And, like, right before I had paid it off, uh, Fed loan, which turned it at financial, they're like, hey, now that we got settled into this new uh, provider, we're going to be switching over to another provider to handle your student loans. So, uh, yeah, just uh, we'll need you to have a new login, new password, but we'll be updating you soon on that. I was like, yeah, I can't deal with that no more. It was like, I don't like that feeling of not being in control of my own destiny. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of that. And also it's like, I've lost like some records through these services. Like, cause like they don't have all of your statements on there. They have like just most, your most recent up to date, like up to year statements. Like I need to see the whole layout and every layout is different. It's like, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. I don't know if it's with you, but I've heard that previously. That's like when you, they switch out and go from one come to another one that they don't keep the records so it's hard to yeah this is how much you actually owe like no i paid this amount already 
Mm-hmm. But you don't have the proof of it. So like, yeah, you, you just screw me over. And apparently a lot of these services are starting to get understaffed because like, remember, they weren't making money because like, oh, there was, there was no money coming. There in. was no money. <laughs> there was no revenue coming in. So they had to lay off a lot of workers. And now they finna be like overwhelmed with call centers. And it's just a big headache. That's why I was like, I got to get out of it. I don't want to be in the middle of all that. And I'm very glad that I got that, especially with like the actors, writers strike happening right now. I'm glad that I had like a delayed gratification to where like the situation was reversed and I had just graduated college, decided to go fully into my career, which I did to an extent, but like I still held back because like, you know, you adjust into like adult life, living on your own, stuff like that. What if I had with full in, was able to be successful of it, have like part of a union and whatnot. Not pay, not worry about student loans, what I've had, blown my money and all my stimulus checks during the pandemic. Everything's good. And then I find out Supreme Court, not going to forgive yeah, our loans. Awesome. So now I got that 54 grand. And then I find out the, you know, the right of strikes happening. So like now I'm out I'm of work. work and it's like I got all this depth on me. Like I'm glad that like I went the delayed gratification approach to where I was able to like still have fun you know, still have a life, somewhat of a life and like <laughs> dive into my career as best I could, make the connections that I could now and still be able to like grind and like knock out the loans and then later on be debt free and have the time and availability to build up my career more and focus more on that. So I'm glad, I'm glad, very glad with the approach that I went for compared to the other way, because the other way I would have been, we would not be here right now. I'd be I'd be stressed out somewhere. <laughs> right. So getting into now that you've paid this off, now that you have more time on your hands to do those things, to be more creative, obviously to pay off the debt, you really had to grind and work a ton of hours. I think you mentioned you worked, you were working 75 hours a week. You took it down, what, 65, you said, or 68? Uh, <laughs> that was for before I went to India. That was my, my break. That was your break. But you were basically working 60, 70 hours a week. Yes. Since you paid off, now, but since you've paid off the debt, has that went down further? Uh, <laughs> to someone who's um, admittedly kind of a workaholic, but it's just because I have so many goals and ideas that like you need income. Yeah. And I like, I just like having the resources to be able to pay the people that are helping me out and also be able to live on my wages and also be able to live comfortably and not just like trying to survive paycheck paycheck um i i tone it down to at least 60 hours now um so since i paid off my student loans my exit plan was to um stop working up north because if you think about it i was spending about 200 dollars in transportation taking two trains to go to work from south side to north side every single day so i transferred to the cost bucks and the um the fat belly that's like closer to my area compared to uh, I don't work I don't work in that area no more so I I worked in Lincoln Park up north I don't I, I no longer work, have to commute up there so I transferred both jobs to right by my crib which they're both five minutes away from my house so now that's a five minute commute that's two hundred dollars back in my pocket that's more time to like say if I want to go home um, you know just uh, set up my outfit for tomorrow or cook something real quick, have like just a break. Also like squeezing cat nap. Like I love taking naps now. Like I've always loved taking naps. It's just like I knew I had to sacrifice some years to get to this point where that's an option. Like last year, last, yesterday I took like a, I had like a two, three hour break in between jobs. I went to, I took a whole nap. <laughs> had like slobber all over my pillow and everything. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I like having that, that opportunity. I have time. I've been able to buy back my time and have that free time to be able to do that. The luxury of having your time back, essentially. Mm-hmm. So now that it's 65, what's the end game? The end game is just basically to be able to work and do what you want to do on your own, have the passion, but also be able to make the money, profit out of it. Yeah. But not working for another company, or do you mind still working um, to get to that point where you can just be comfortable? I still like my coffee job because, like, hey, it's free coffee. I haven't paid for coffee in like four years now. So. I kind of coffee wanna, person that makes sense. I want kind of want to hang on to that. Plus, like I've met so many dope creatives and like connections that have like gotten me to this point. The links between the mutual friends, I wouldn't have met them. No with, six degrees. Yeah. So like this whole this whole network of yeah. you know connects, I wouldn't have met throughout the coffee job. 
And also like the benefits, the benefits there are like really good. I mean, it's still imperfect and like, you know, to an degree and, you know, cor corporate stuff. I mean, but that's with any food job, food service job, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I'd rather keep at least just that and then be able to do what I love on the side. But yeah, uh, until I get to that point, I'd rather just have, I kind of just want to move out to just having just one food service job and then the other job being like janitorial or like just cleaning in general. Like, I don't mind. I'm a social person. That doesn't mean like I'm like shy or awkward. Like I can, I can go from like social butterfly to like emo real quick. So <laughs> I like, and I'm, I like to really clean. Cleaning is like very therapeutic for me. Not like in a OCD way, but like, just like, it's very like comforting to like, you know, for the meantime, I rather, I prefer to have those, that type of lifestyle. If I can get more money out of the cleaning job and then, you know, keep that, the coffee job is like now my secondary income, that'd be great. But in the meantime, that's what I'm going for. So no chance of you moving up in the chain on the corporate, the coffee, the, 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 coffee the corporate job? ladder. Yeah. Um, on the coffee job. So originally when I transferred over stores, the goal was to, the mindset was to, um, you know, I want to get more money. You know, I've worked in the dead end jobs and like, I've seen like the difference, like uh, just a breakdown in the four years I've been at my coffee job, I've gotten $4 in raises compared to my sandwich job. I've been there now for three years, um, right before I transferred over to my location now. They're like, yeah, we just gave you a pay raise. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> so I checked my pay stub. Guess how much the, the raise was? 10 cents. Oh, he's close. It was uh, 65 cents. Damn. Yeah. And the min based with the minimum wage, which is 15 65. Yeah, well, it was $15, but with the pay raise, it was 15 65. But now, um, a year now, a year afterward, um, the pay raise just went, uh, a minimum wage in Chicago just went up to 15 80 So you got another 15 cent raise? No. Not yet, at least? No. So. That doesn't really count. So now that raise is like disappeared. Why? Because now the minimum wage has gone up twenty cent more. Oh, uh, but so now no, there's no raise. Oh, uh, jeez. Yeah, compared to my other job, where I'll probably get another is uh, we get a raise like every six months. So I'll probably be at twenty dollars an hour by like the end of this year or next year. But yeah, you see where it's like I know that I have the qualities of a manager, but. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that corporate stress, especially like I've been on the other side where it's just, it's not for me. I can't do it. I'll take advantage of the food, you know, the amenities of like, you know, food discount, free coffee, half price on this, free stocks. I get free stocks with the company and like, you know, they got good dental, good uh, eyes. Like I got like contacts. My yearly contacts were only uh, forty dollars this year, and not only pay for the forty dollars was the fee, you know, the fee to get in. So, I rather keep that, you know, that that financial aspect of it. But moving up, unless the opportunity the opportunity presents itself and it's like it works in my favor, I don't I don't really want to go that route. I, I laugh because that's always my reasoning for never moving up. You know, I did move up the corporate ladder just for. Financial reasons, ultimately, I'm like, I can do See, it. See, nothing wrong with that. It's no. like, if you know you qualify to do the job and you're willing to, you're going to get make a little more money, then why not? But well, in my case, not only that, I was already doing the job. So it's like, if I'm already doing the job, I might as well just get to pay for it. I had so many people telling me that it took a while for it to rest in my head. Cause mm -hmm. In my head, I'm like, I'm only doing this to fund my passion. So yeah. once the passion takes off, I'm leaving this shit. But now it's like, you know what, well, I'm here, let me make the most and make the most out of my buck and truly get my value. Because I don't think you're ever going to know my true value, but while I'm here, let me get the most out of it. And now with like inflation really kicking in and like um, it's the food service industry. So they already have like less staffing now to, you know, make some of that pandemic money back. But also like they're cutting people's hours. So they're having less people do the job of three, four different people yeah. is like, it's kind of like a manager. It's, let's be honest, that's what managers do. Yeah. So it was like, I'm already doing management material, but like, I don't, you're not giving me no type of raise or anything. So why would I want to jump in the field and still get like that feeling of undervalued for all my efforts? Yeah. Ex exploit it. So yeah. Quick back, back question. Uh, during the pandemic, did you, did they give you raises? Cause that was also during the shutdown mode and it was like, 
some people didn't want to work, some people couldn't work. Mm-hmm. So did they give out more raises um, for doing that, or was it just more so just thank you for your service? Uh, <laughs> a little bit of both. Uh, with the sandwich job, not really. Um, I heard that for the people that are already there, they gave like the the leave pay, um, which that's that's okay, that's cool. Um, with my coffee job, we shut down for six weeks. Based, they did the same thing. Where like based on the annual hours we were working, they paid you like the average of what you were making, which is a uh, I really appreciate that. I've never had any job do that for me before, so props to them for that. I mean, there's a lot of other things wrong, but I appreciate them for that because like like we said, we all didn't know what was going on at the time. Right. But uh, yeah, they gave us a little like a two, three, four dollar. Um, little raise for like a small little period of time but like then we got the raises too because like the coffee giants you know it's a lot of unionizing going on pressures of them to do that and also like make more living wages and stuff so out of pressure they had to do it anyway so no choice yeah so that's why i'm also for the ride because like hey if i get more money out of that and also steal free coffee like i'm gonna i'm gonna take full advantage of that because that works that works to my favor so why not so along with now, so you're slowly working on cutting those hours down. So, but with that in mind, does that also give you more time to spend with the family, with just, you know, downtown for yourself? Obviously, you, 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 com- you commute less, so you already figured that out so you can have that time. But now, do you have more time for the family where you, before you're just working, grinding, like sacrificing? Yeah. Now, it's less, less of a sacrifice, I'm assuming now. Uh, yeah, degree, I mean, at least. I like to try to have that that mentality where it's like there's still an obstacle in my way because like let's be honest there's always going to be obstacle in your way but like that just pushes me to um i kind of stay like very celibate throughout this whole process because uh that's interesting right? having that very sober mindset makes you wake up to reality that like this is not where i want to be in life right now or like this is not i'm not finding fulfillment out of working this nine to five food job like People, people use like substances and do stuff to like cope with their reality. They're like, I'm one paycheck away from like being homeless or this and that. And it's like, they use that to like, especially like when people take smoke breaks, it's like, you need to, you need to cope with that. And I tried to take it with like a sobriety type of level to take it all in, to get that motivation to really get that extra step to where we're here now. And, you know, I'm able to enjoy the fruits of enjoy the fruits of my labor of that. So I definitely have a quite a bit more free time. Like I know I could work. I can honestly work less hours. I can work up to 55 hours and still be good. But like <laughs> with, with, with everything I have going on right now, because like right after I paid all my student loans, had to pay Uncle Sam. So like just dealing with that and then like I have stuff that, you know, I have so many ideas and stuff that I, I just been holding back. Like I've been learning uh, guitar for the past year, <laughs> for <laughs> very random for the uh, cosplay that I'm working on that I got a whole creative idea off of. Okay. So and also like, just I have time to like fully invest in my career, spend more time with my family. Like we're going to Cabo, Mexico, for Thanksgiving this year. Like they just came out the blue and it's like, yeah, let's go to let's go to Mexico. So I'm like, okay, and like Sunday the tickets got bought. So. <laughs> I have that luxury now. Nice. And also I have the um the maturity with um handling credit more. Like my credit score has always been great, but like just having juggling like the process of how I like paid off my student loans and like knowing that I need to put this aside for this, this aside for that. Like I know how to like settle. I know how to I know how to use my money effectively now. Compared to like when I was 18 and only had a debit card. And I spent like all my hundred dollars <laughs> that my mom just gave me. <laughs> so, yeah. So with the amount of money you just paid off, those damn credit score better be immaculate. I mean, credit's great. I'm about to be thirty. Yeah, you know, I'm twenty eight right now. I'll be um, yeah, I guess. Dece- December. We're both December babies. Um, I'm older. That don't mean nothing. I'm close to forty to thirty. <laughs> no, you're not. You still like a good twenty five. Sure, I I take that. <laughs> But yeah, I'll be 30 next year. No kids. Credit's great. Debt free. Career driven. Sound like we're doing a, a infomercial for a, 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 a online dating. High value man. <laughs> oh God, nothing. <laughs> Anything but that. Anything but that. Yeah. High value man. <laughs> Kevin Samuels reincarnated. But yeah, um, I can't complain right now. I mean, 
I'm, I feel like I'm doing okay for like an average 28 year old black man in Chicago. <laughs> I don't know. I feel, no, I feel you. I feel you. you. You definitely are an individual who likes living with a certain obstacle to obtain and to uh, accomplish that obstacle. So what is your current obstacle now that you're really pursuing to like accomplish and get a goal with? Because you're a very goal driven. So what is it right now that's in your eye to like get to that next level where you want to be now that we out of the debt hole? Um, I just got to put in more work. As funny as that sounds like Kobe now. Sound like Kobe. As funny as it seems like, no, that was more of. This, this sounds like a job not done moment. Like, job not done. I'm not happy. Job financial. Not done. <laughs> job's not done. <laughs> job's not done yet. <laughs> Making the whole grin with the mouth and everything. <laughs> But uh, the job is definitely not done now that um, playing into like that FOMO that we talked about last year, that fear of missing out. Um, I don't feel like I've missed out on anything. I just I now have even more free time because like, remember, I wanted to create more. But like I was just that loan was just that anger holding me down. But like I don't have that anger no more. And like I'm almost caught up with like everything, you know, catching up with like stuff that I wanted to get done, stuff from my Amazon cart, you know, that's going to eventually be like used as like a investment of, of sorts. Yeah. Um, like I just got to put in and create a work, put in more work, um, find ways to leverage that. And also like, as I plan to, I'm planning to be done with my sandwich job in at least a year from now, I still need it right now. Cause like it's super dependable income. It's food service. The job is so easy. People just make it so hard. People really just make it hard. See, I thought about I thought about retail job. I've been in retail for sixteen years. It's just I say this all the time. The job isn't hard. It's just either the people you work with or the people that you uh, have to serve and help assist. And just the combination of both, they make it hard. Yeah, like the job itself isn't hard. Just it's people really make not it hard. hard. <laughs> it's like it's just like you see where my my kind of hustle mentality comes from. Yeah. It's like. This job is so easy. I could like, yeah. I could do this as a manager. I don't want to because I don't want that that management, you know, stress. But it's yeah. like I could do it. So I'ma just basically drain out every type of resource that I can gain from that. So if that's monetary, if that's sandwich, like food wise, because I still use that as like my sandwich benefit. Pay, I paid all my student loans surviving off steamed broccoli, white rice, baby carrots, and turkey sandwiches. For how many years? At least three or four now. Yeah. Yeah. And like just, you know, occasionally treating myself to like five guys or like Giordano's. Or that's, well, okay. Every yeah. time I hit like a milestone. Five guys is a, a treat. Well, then again, knowing that price is a treat. So I get you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just um, eventually like just switching over to the second job. Hopefully it just gets to the point where one day I just need one job. I only need one job and I'm able to do this for a living and still find enjoyment and creativity out of it without feeling burnt out. Because I feel like at this point, I'm slightly burned out with food industry. Because remember, I worked the whole pandemic. And the the neighborhood I'm in now it requires a lot more social energy to the point where when I'm done with work, I don't want to talk. I really don't want to talk. <laughs> so, so pros and cons of that, then, of being close to the home, working close to the home. <laughs> yeah, at the at the cost of being five minutes away from my house. I mean, yeah, be more. it's uh, a fair trade, yeah, I, guess, I guess. But yeah, nothing in this world is free. So hey, there you go. But yeah, just finding that transition between jobs to where I could just eventually make three jobs of income all in one job and still have the same type of ish benefits. And the same type of, you know, like 401k, because I still have investments and all that and the free stock and health dental and all that, like, you know, as an adult, making sure that like that's taken care of. And um, also, like, I'm able to um, have a savings account now. Like, I've been like collecting up savings, not so much right now, because I still got so many things. I'm like everything everywhere all at once at the moment. But like, just like, when I finally open up the savings account, I have more to put in that. So like I wanted to, I basically wanted to have a career in acting slash just creative field in general. And knowing that like only 2% of people make it in this industry. Yeah. I wanted to have like a safeguard so that if it, if all else fails, no matter what effort I put in, at least my future is taken care of. At least my retirement, you know, is taken care of. Yeah. And I knew that from the get go that like, this is my extra plan if this doesn't jump off. So, I think again, getting back into the uh, actors and writers track, I think it just we 
I think the outside world that you that's not in the field, that's not in the industry, they just assume that if you see somebody in a particular film, a TV show, whatever, they just assume, oh, they got some money coming. They got, they got some got money from that. And the reality is, like, they maybe got paid. It wasn't like a huge amount. There's only, like you said, two percent that make it. There's only a small percentage of people that actually make seven figures per film. The Leonardo per role. DiCaprio, right. Brad Pitt, exactly. the Will Smiths. Yeah. We get the we see those people and we recognize all the time. We just assume that oh, that's how everybody gets paid. The reality is, that's not like that's. Hundreds and hundreds of people that's on staff, they don't get paid that millions and millions of dollars. It's gig work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like this field is essentially like we paid we paid for this rental space as like part of a gig, and like this yeah this whole profession is gig work. Mm -hmm. So it's like I need something that's more like you know financially stable and like financially secure. That way I feel comfortable to do this and still be able to you know make a corporate dollar and have that tucked away from my savings or retirement for one K and all that. So I mean I can coming from the background of music, not necessarily being an artist, so I'll but basically you being a manager, A and R, also knowing that honestly another mis misconception that they think artists get a certain amount of money and the reality is you get a small frat they get a small fraction of the sales, particularly if you sign to a label. Now with streaming, you only get like pennies on a dollar. Day. Pennies on a dollar. And that's like for eight you know, streaming is like eight to ten episodes now. Yeah. So it's like like they're like what the reason that they're striking is like they're not making they're not making that much and then it's like they have to wait for that whole rollout to happen, happen in between gigs so it's like you only going to pay like a one time gig for like that show that you did then you got to wait and it's like how am I supposed to survive off that that income when it's like I basically made like what up to like probably like 10 grand maybe for right? the whole not yeah. for not per episode no, for, for just the whole, the whole thing yeah. yeah and it's like how am I supposed to survive off that not you know, sign up for any other work. I was, and it's not guaranteed the show's gonna come back. You gotta wait until the yeah, especially with streaming, right? You gotta decide. You gotta wait. You gotta wait until they say, "Oh, we're bringing it back." But when is it? Next this year? Next year? Two years from now? Yep. You don't know. And like, it'll be like a very great show. The Netflix, like, let's cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I get whether they're still fighting for it, but again, you having a backup plan. It's like it's like it's important and. It's a struggle, and a lot of creative people don't want to go through it. But you got to. You gotta have that backup. You gotta have that 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 hard taste of reality. That's like you might not blow up from this, especially like you know with models and you know just all types of other creatives. Like yeah. you gotta if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you gotta going into this game, you gotta have a plan. Because like all this right now, like this seems like a fairy tale to the people watching right now. But it's like just like this took ten years to like have. To bring into fruition and like it's because i planned for it i didn't initially plan for it but like as i got closer to that goal i knew that this is what i wanted to do and this is going to be part of the milestone of my discography so so this has been a long grinding but eventually durable journey for you you would say right eventually yeah definitely a coming of age till but it's been it was a 10-year process 10-year process yeah so Earlier, we was talking about obstacles and what would be the next obstacle for you. So I, I kind of want to go a little further and go deeper than that. Do you have like a trajectory the next 10 years? These previous 10 years, this has been where you are. Do you have um, like a trajectory the next 10 years where you want to be at? Next 10 years? Um, <laughs> not putting you on the spot or anything, just, you know. Uh, I don't. Not that I'm not happy with where I am right now. It's just. Um, I'm up for whatever, but I want to be in an even better position than I am right now. Because like I, 10 years ago, I didn't see myself in the spot. Like 10 years ago, we didn't see a global pandemic happening either. So yeah, 10 years is it's very far away to look, especially coming from Chicago is like, that's such a far away. Like you, you're a whole different person 10 years from now. No, I hope. Yeah. I'm... I don't know. So beyond a smarter, wiser, uh, eventually married, <laughs> no additional debt added into me having to work another sixty-eight hours. Yeah, to off. hopefully that that part. Yes, <laughs> um, Mary, we'll we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really focusing on that. I'm just focusing on myself right now. You know, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm I'm just down for the ride. I know I'm just gonna keep going at you know my career. And hopefully something big happens or not, but at least something that's big is in 
is satisfactory for me and it helps me, brings me more at peace and I'm able to make more income off of it while also working less food jobs. So before we wrap this up, I guess let's have a little bit of fun with this. So when you pay off the final debt, the final loan, what was the first thing you did? Like, what was the like? Do you like the exact first thing you did, or did you just geek that geeky like you just did right there? Or what was the first thing you did once you realized this is it? I'm done. Um, nothing really. Um, I worked the double that day, <laughs> and I was one of those days where like you just in the trenches and like you just you just working, working, working. Um, but you know, aside when it's time to like get off the clock and you're able to dive into your day, dive into like the rest of your day. It's just that their realization is like, I just did like a very big adult thing in my life right now. Like only 2% of, no, like less than 1% of people were paying back their student loans during this whole payment pause. Like just to be part of that 1% is just super surreal. And like even everything now is, that we're doing right now is super surreal, but just realizing that like I'm at the end of my journey, it's very, it's very calm and euphoric, but it's also like not my end goal. It's part of what I needed to do to reach that next step, but now I need to move forward. It's okay to celebrate, you know, where you where you've come from and what you've led up to, but I don't want to get stagnant right here and be like, this is the, le this is the peak that I, re I can reach. I want to go even higher. So again, job's not done, essentially. Job's not done yet. <laughs> no need to celebrate. <laughs> job's not done. So yeah, the job, job's definitely not done, but it's a very good start in the right direction. Okay. And I look forward to whatever the future has and whatever God, whatever God has planned for me. So, yeah. So before I get to my inspirational question, let me get one more fun question out the way. What was the first thing that you bought after you paid it? What's the first thing that you bought that made you feel like you didn't have to have that potential buyer for buyer a remorse. Bit more? Yeah, they're like, oh, I might not, I need to pay this new. Like, no, I don't need to. I'm good. I can pay for it. Um, <laughs> so I like French fries. French fries are like one of my favorite foods. <laughs> Every now and then I treat myself to five guy fries. And like, I like using um, cash tips because then that doesn't pop up on my statement. But I was doing that while I was paying all my student loans. But um, the investment that I'll make into my throne, this is where, <laughs> this is where we cut to a clip of me showing my throne that will be part of the marketing for this film. Well, it's definitely a big write off. Like it's a, uh, it's a very, Thronish throne that like some people might see it as like a waste of money, but I see it as an investment that I can pass down to my children. And it's just something that every black household <laughs> back in the seventies has had. So the throne, the throne is like just a symbol of it's a super rare it's, you you gotta you gotta be there, bro. You gotta be there. Are we going are we gonna be playing Roster Throne while you're sitting in the throne? No, but when we have our photo shoot, here's where you cut the footage of us at that photo shoot later on this year. But um, when we have that photo shoot and like you're sitting in it, this is where we cut to zoom in of him and sitting in that throne. Um, when we have that moment, you, you'll just know. You'll just know. Okay. So my inspirational question that I always used to throw out there. So you basically talked about how you was going to pay off this debt, how you paid it off, and how you did a step-by-step you dropped a lot of gems throughout this uh, podcast, but for people out there, give them some word of advice just to make sure that you know they keep it going. Like again, you you have the mama mentality, but you know everybody doesn't necessarily have that same mentality. You sometimes need a little bit more positive affirmation, things of that nature. So give people out there just this a particular step, a particular thing, like a particular trait that you did that kept you going in terms of just budgeting, sacrificing certain things, just whatever it was. Oh man. Uh... Probably, I'll probably have like coaching events or something, whatever happens because of this. But uh, we definitely can't wrap this up in like one, one podcast. But um, of course. definitely, like I said from the get go, like my motto is keep creating. Like if you have a dream, just go for it. 
know the obstacles that you're going to encounter. Be realistic about those goals. Um, set small goals because I know setting a super big, huge goal, like I'm going to pay off 67 grand in student loans. That's a, if you look at it from a big, bigger picture, that is very daunting and like. Like I was smacking your face right now about if you said that to me and you like, you said you had that money to pay. I was like, that's not. Yeah, <laughs> right. But like if you break it down to, okay. The government just extended this time period. So I'm just going to try to knock out the $1,600 loan right now. Or better yet, let's use a snowball method. Um, I can knock out this $300 loan first. And then I can knock out this $2,500 loan. And then as I, I'm going to have more income coming in once I pay off those small loans. So then I can put more loans in the snowball to knock off that big loan. Focus it, focus it on small baby steps. And then those baby steps are going to be small. And just know that you're not going to move at the level that other people might might not. That's okay. Just move at your own pace. Move at your own tempo. And then if you look up, if you just keep going at it and staying focused and staying committed to your goals, next thing you know, if you look back at the bigger picture, you have this big goal that you've knocked out when at the time you just knock, you just were like, tunnel vision on like this very small goal and as you knock that out you just knocking out goal after goal after goal but like just look at it from the look at it small and then over time the bigger picture reveals itself and it's like wow i actually did all that and i'm here like living and breathing testament right now to tell you that like it's possible you just if you fail to plan you plan to fail like every single time like i didn't plan a pandemic happening but i planned how i was going to execute all those student loan pauses that kept happening, I knew that I was going to execute how I was going to be able to get that goal along with everything. So you need a game plan, especially like me as us as creatives in general, like you need a game plan. But yeah, that's it. If you have any other information or anything, um, feel free to hit me up. We can do like coaching session or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, coaching sessions, dating sessions. Yep. I mean, all the above. We, we can do that. <laughs> so yeah. Well, this has been a very insightful and inspirational story to be to be able to have been taken a part of. So I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this process. Of course, man. It's been a pleasure having you here in this hall, my creative world. Yeah, it's been a, a process. We came from a house to this big ass space. Yep. I want to say a word I probably shouldn't say, but I want to say we made it. <laughs> and we drank all our wine. I'm about to feel toast again. All right, but. <laughs> Yeah, we're out. Yeah, but we're out. hey, till next time. <laughs> <laughs>